Good morning. I am Donovan Richards, Chair of the Subcommittee on Zoning and Franchise. And this morning we are joined by Speaker Melissa Mark Favorito and Council Members Torres, Greenfield, Chen, Gentili, Lander, did I say Chair Greenfield? Uh, Council Member Garodnik, and I said Chen. Today we have, oh, Reynoso, we're also joined by Reynoso and Miss Reynoso <laughs> as well, and their bundle of joy. Uh, today we have four items on our calendar. We held and closed the public, public hearings on all of these items in prior meetings, so we will only be holding a vote today. We will be voting to approve land use item number 715, the Manhattan West Phase 3 text amendment. This application is for a zoning text amendment that would alter the design requirements for a public access area associated with a development in the 9th Avenue Rail Yard in the Special Hudson Yards District. This, the site is located in Councilmember Johnson's district and he supports approval. Secondly, we will be voting to disapprove, disapprove a cafe in Councilmember Chen's district, land use item number 712, Preda Ningja, located at 125 Chamber Street. Councilmember Chen does not support this application for a cafe obstructing the sidewalk primarily due to safety concerns for pedestrians in this very crowded area undergoing significant construction activities and she is here in attendance in this, and I guess I will go to Councilmember Chen for a statement and then we will proceed. Good morning, thank you, Council uh, Chair Richards and member of the subcommittee. Today I'm here to recommend disapproval of a sidewalk cafe application in my district. The Pret Manche application for cafe at 125 Chamber Street on the north side of Chamber Street near West Broadway. Members of the community board asked my office to review this application after having been unable to come to an agreement with an applicant that did not appear before them with enough time to come to a true agreement. The board was unable to support the application, citing significant concerns regarding safeties in addition to a lack of clarity regarding the cafe's plan that they were shown and the applicant's failure to appear at scheduled meetings. The north side of Chamber Street is a major thoroughfare for thousands of borough Manhattan Community College and Stuyvesant High School students each day. And significant changes have occurred in the neighborhood since the area was deemed appropriate for sidewalk cafes. BMCC, PS89, PS234 all move into this area afterwards. And the volume of students walking the street was unforeseen. Indeed, significant changes are still happening. There's a major construction project one block to the east, the whole block of church between Chamber and Warren. There's also a smaller project on the southeast corners of Chamber and Church, and still yet another block long project one block south on West Broadway between Warren and Murray. Additionally, the Warren Street Water Main project closed off blocks intermediately, and the Worth Street Water Main project, which has shifted bus route and westbound traffic to neighboring street. And there are still various other construction projects I can't even keep track of. All these projects means delivery, street closures, obstructions, and more congestions as pedestrians and vehicles are rerouted to accommodate a variety of changes. This particular intersection, intersection at Chambers and West Broadway is very dangerous and congested as a result. Chamber Street, which is a narrow and heavily used lane with frequent double parking, cement trucks, and closed lane with vehicles known to drive on the curb to get around stalled traffic. Congestion often force pedestrians, including children, into the street. I do not believe that this is a safe space for a sidewalk cafe, for people walking between road traffic and the cafe. I know the street well, and I'm concerned about the volume of traffic there. While we try working with the applicant to come to an agreement, I'm deeply concerned about the risks that a sidewalk cafe in this location pose to the health and safety of residents nearby, as well as the thousands of pedestrians that transverse these streets daily. I'm also further concerned that the applicant seek the original proposed sidewalk cafe against the wishes of the community board, who believed the cafe was much smaller and despite being made aware of my concern about this process. Furthermore, the applicant indicated to my office that a primary reason for pursuing this cafe related to the desire to install 
partitions between the tables and chairs and pedestrians. These partition reading Pred Amanchere were intended to extend its branding present into the sidewalk so that it would be more visible to potential customers. Our streets are not and must not become advertisement space for franchises at the expense of the safety and local conditions. I cannot recommend approval of this cafe and believe that the safety concern of my constituents and pedestrians must be taken precedence. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Chen. Next, we will be voting to approve with modification the ECF East 96th Street application, land use items number 700 through 703. This application is for a zoning map amendment, zoning text amendment, and two special permits to allow for the development of a full block site located in the Speaker's District. The site currently contains the Marx Brothers Co-op Playground and the Co-op Tech High School. The new development would include the reconstruction of the Marx Brothers Playground, a new space for the Co-op Tech High School, two new spaces for public high schools containing 430 and 340 students, and nearly 1 million square feet of residential space. 30% of apartments will be reserved for an affordable units averaging 60% of the AMI. There will also be 20,000 square feet of retail. The speaker supports approval of this application with modifications to the plans to clearly cap the height of the mixed use building at 673 feet, 10 inches, and has also achieved deeper affordability with more units reaching 40% AMI and below, and an additional tier of units at 30% of AMI. The plan also calls for improvements to a nearby park and outreach for local hiring. The speaker is in attendance and will make remarks. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The public benefits of the ECF East 96th Street project are unprecedented, with nearly half a billion dollars of private investment supporting the creation of new schools, playgrounds, parks, and affordable housing. All this will be achieved without any use of city capital. Ambitious projects of this scope and complexity are rare, and I want to thank all the applicants, uh, all the team, uh, team members uh, of the applicant team, the New York City Educational Construction Fund and Avalon Bay, along with those who have worked so hard to shape the final project, including Community Board 11, the Office of the Borough President, Department of Education, and members of the subcommittee. The height of the building has been a challenge from the start with an inherent tension between the scale of the building and the ability to deliver the var variety of public benefits outlined above. We were able to reduce the building by five stories through the ULERP process and arrive at a place where the numerous public benefits help mitigate the concerns. This project invests $300 million of school construction to build 270,000 square feet of brand new modern facilities for three East Harlem high schools, Co-op Tech, Park East, and Heritage High School. These will be the first new high school facilities in East Harlem in nearly 50 years and will expand classroom space by 60%. Co-op Tech will be able to expand their career and technical education programs to meet high demand, while Park East and Heritage High will be outfitted with a modern gymnasium, cafeteria, auditorium, library, labs, and arts spaces. This is also the first time that Heritage and Park East will have access to outdoor recreational space. The relocation of these high schools will open up opportunities to reprogram their existing spaces for community serving uses. DOE has committed that the existing Park East facility will continue to be used for educational purposes. Heritage High is currently located in the Julia de Burgos Cultural Center, which will be able to expand cultural programming once the high school moves to its new facility. I am pleased that the project will also invest $8 million to reconstruct and improve the Marx Brothers Playground, and that the applicants have agreed to incorporate local community input in the final design. The applicants have also committed to funding upgrades at the neighboring Stanley Isaac Park, partnering with local CBOs to develop a local hiring and workforce development plan, and providing 20,000 square feet of commercial and retail space in the project. Finally, the project delivers a tremendous number of affordable housing units, with 30% of the project, approximately 315 units, set aside as affordable housing, reaching deep levels of affordability, including units at 30% and 40% of AMI. I would like to commend the applicants for going beyond the MIH minimum and delivering a project that addresses a diversity of community needs. 
During the public hearing, we heard concerns voiced over the alienation of the Marx Brothers playground and ability of the playground to generate floor area for development purposes, and I heard loud and clear the concerns about building scale. I respect and appreciate these concerns, but in the context of a once-in-a-generation project, which will deliver new state-of-the-art school space for hundreds of students, 300 units of affordable housing, new park space, hundreds of new jobs, many of which will be available to the local community, new cultural space in the Julia de Burgos. There's much here to celebrate as well. So with that, I ask my colleagues to vote yes on this application as modified. Thank you, Speaker, for your leadership. We will be also voting to file land use items number 694 through 699, the Baychester Square applications, which have been withdrawn. I understand that Councilmember King has worked extensively with EDC, the developer, and other city agencies to find a compromise on this application, but in the end was unable to support approval or modification. I want to thank EDC and the developer for all the time and effort they put into this project, and we look forward to continuing to work on a plan for the site in the future. All righty, now do any of uh, subcommittee members have any questions or statements on these applications? No? Okay. Seeing none, I will now call on a vote to approve land use item number 715, approve land use items number 700 to 703 with modifications, and disapprove land use items number 712, the cafe, and file 694 through 699. Council, please call the roll. Chair Richards. I vote aye. Councilmember Gentili. I vote aye. <clears throat> Councilmember Gorodnik. Councilmember Williams. Can I excuse me on my vote? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, I'm voting aye on all, uh, but I wanted to speak on uh, the, the speaker's projects. I know there's been a lot of uh, talk about it, and I just wanted to congratulate her on, on, on the work that uh, she did. I was also concerned about uh, what I was hearing, so I always try to view it in terms of I know everybody's always going to be opposed to change, uh, and what are we getting in return for that change, and it seemed that we actually got quite a lot. We got some real affordable housing. Um, everybody hates the 80-20. This is a 70-30. Uh, we can always do more, but I think it's great, particularly at the lower income spectrum of 30%, 40% AMI. That park uh, will be uh, returned uh, in very close proximity to where the original was, and we're getting additional schools. So I think uh, for all in all, it's a pretty good project. I want to say congratulations and vote aye on all. Thank you, Councilman Williams. Councilman Reynoso. I vote aye. Councilmember Torres. By vote of six in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and zero abstentions, land use item 715 is approved. 700 through 703 are approved with modifications. Uh, so land use item 712 is disapproved, and 694 through 699 are filed, and these items are referred to the full land use committee. Thank you. Uh, we are going to lay over land use item number 720, the 34th Street heliport application. And before we close out, I just wanted to thank the land use staff for their diligence and hard work on these applications, starting with Raju Mann, Julie Lubin, Amy Levinson, John Douglas, Dylan Casey, Liz Lee, Rosie Perez, and, you, and Jeff Ewan. Thank you all for your work on all of these applications. With that being said, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.